Hey everybody, I just thought I'd uh, show you this clock because I had to take uh, uh, antique movement out to work on my 1880 Alexander Fleet clock. I went ahead and uh, took this movement out of this clock. This is uh, Buller and Sean Buller Sean movement. It's a very thick plated movement, uh, just like the other one. Has a count wheel, has the articulated bird. It's, but now I have to put it back in the clock. And because uh, I had to take it out to work on my other clock. I already got the uh, chains on. And I uh, had to. Uh, Adjust a few things. Uh, if this arm here, which trips the bird, and this is the bird lever right here, as you can see, I'm making the bird go out. If they're too close together, then the um, cuckoo will continue to go because the bird can't come back in the in the house and plus this movement sorry about that I'm trying to uh, show you a few things this movement has this wire right here which is actually a spring wire to keep this lever down so when it comes out that spring wire pushes it back down into the count wheel and without it it might not go back down into the the appropriate slot and the bird can continue to cuckoo so I'm gonna put the um, movement back in This clock came, I got it from Goodwill, and it came with the topper, but the topper was broken. So one day, I might get Steve Fowler to repair the topper for me. It's a... Uh, Deer head topper. And so, uh, one day I might get him to repair it for me. This is a cast plate. The cast plates are thicker than the stamp plates <coughs> and they have um, sometimes they have some slight imperfections on the plates from uh, the casting process I got two screws in. I got the uh, bird pretty well centered in the door. And there I have two screws. So now it's a good time to uh, flip the clock over and attach the wire from the bird to the uh, cuckoo door. And this is where I love these doctor's tools. You can get them at Harbor Freight. You grab a hold of the wire and 
that way you can manipulate it to go into the uh, appropriate slot the steeple it has a small um, portion on it let me see if I can set this clock up so you can see it better it's missing the one of course and the numbers are uh, nailed in here it says made in Germany and there's the uh, cuckoo bird now I have permanent markers that are colored different color markers and I could touch in that bird but I think it's some people want an antique clock to look brand new I'm not one of those people I want it to look okay here the bird is faded but you can still see the colors and it still works and so uh, I don't want to touch it up I think it's good enough here just like my Alexander Plea clock the anti clocks a lot of them have these hooks to hook into the topper and then the topper uh, would be pushed on to these nails that are sticking out and then there would be eyelets to connect these uh, wires so the topper doesn't come off. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the other two screws in and then the bellows. So stand by. I want to go ahead and mention if you have a hole when you're putting the movement in if you have a hole that is worn out I'd say you could put a wooden matchstick or even a toothpick now some people say that the toothpick is harder than the um, the wood so it's better to use a wooden matchstick but anyway, you break off part of the toothpick or matchstick and put it in the hole and just enough that it's the depth of the hole. And then you put your screw in and the screw grabs a hold of that toothpick or matchstick piece of wood that you put down in there and it allows it to tighten up. This particular clock has got these on both sides and that's an access panel so you can access both sides of the uh, uh, clock. Now some people say that that access panel is so you can lubricate your clock. Um, you can if you want. I would suggest taking the clock all the way out to lubricate it. Now in this case, the screw doesn't fit the hole that well. So um, I'm going to break off this toothpick. Now you have to understand that the top hole, the toothpick goes all the way in because that's part of the uh, music. So um, you don't want your toothpick, you don't really want your toothpick falling in there. So I'm just going to 
put it like that. Connect the uh, bellow lift wire and then stick that toothpick through the hole of the clock along with lining up the nail and then putting my screw in and that will allow the bellow to tighten up more if everything is lined up properly. And you can hear that noise. That's the uh, screw tightening up on the uh, toothpick and a hole from the toothpick that I just put in. And that's nice and tight now. Now this bellow has got the uh, bird wire on it. And I'm trying not to um, bend the wire because the clock was working before I took the movement out. So I want to uh, try to keep the wire, the lift wires, all the same shape. The pendulum leader suspension wire, as you can see, it's straight, and that's what you want. You adjust the uh, crutch assembly when you're putting the clock in V, and not this pendulum leader wire. Let's see if I can get it to cuckoo for you. Now you can um, trip it by the access panel. And I have to adjust the uh, high note lift wire because as you can see, the bellow is still sticking up. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to do a things at once as you can see the bellow is still sticking up so I need to adjust the high note lift wire so it goes down so the bellow closes but I want to hold a pair of pliers over here so I don't bend the wire uh, that's closest to the left side of the movement and then 
with my fingers, I'm going to bend that wire down. And I didn't do any good, so I'm going to have to bend it some more. And the reason why you want to hold the, the section over here is because you don't want to change that information. Um, I need to uh, move this camera out of the way so I can work on this thing. And I'm sorry that y'all cannot see it. But I don't want to tear up my antique clock. I bet it too much. So now I have to bend it up. What I'm going to do is take the uh, lift wire off the high note lift uh, lever and close the uh, bellow and bring the lever up to the wire. And I'll explain that as soon as I take this off. And get you a better view. As you can see, the high note lift lever is right here, and the wire is about an inch away from it. So I have to bend this up to the wire, and that will get me in the ballpark of where it needs to be. But because this is all been out of shape I'm gonna straighten it and then bend the wire up to where it needs to be
I could make another wire, but that comes off the bellow, but this will work. Like I said, it will get you in the ballpark. Now I've got the uh, clock activated to cuckoo. And as you can see, this bellow is open all the way. And it's not finishing because I got this wire bent up too much. So now I need to bring it down some. Uh, the wire came off. Sometimes cuckoos can be a pain in the butt. I think what I'm going to do is take that bellow out and make another wire because the wire's not long enough to reach the wire that's coming off the bellow 
is not long enough to reach this wire and that's why the bellows stand open and if I keep bending this wire I'm gonna break it so I think I'm going to take and make a longer wire because when it is off this wire here I don't know if you can see it but this what this lever here is what trips the the cuckoo as the great wheel which has got spikes on it and so this wire here has to be down so that lever that hits that spike hits the spike and currently this portion of this wire is not bent properly it should be in the same direction as this wire here and so that's why you always hold this section right here with a pair of pliers and so you don't want it to move because if it moves on you then your cuckoo is off and so whenever you go to bend this wire you want to hold this section with a pair of pliers but I didn't notice it, but this wire here is not bent right. The trip wire is going that way. So this section of this wire needs to be bent so it goes that way. But this wire here is not long enough and so I'm going to make a longer wire. I'll be back. Now when I got this clock, this bellow was broken. So you could see this right here is part of uh, some laminated flooring. I made a new top for it. And so, uh, it didn't have no weight. I just now put a nickel on it. So, here I'm making a, a wire. And here I bent this wire so it's in the same shape as the trip wire the one that catches those pins that are on the uh, uh, great wheel and if you watch my other videos I show you how to make a Bella wire so here I got a, a long wire that's attached to the bellow and I'm going to mark this section of the wire with a permanent marker and then put a bend in that wire and that will get me in the uh, vicinity of where I need to be I got it adjusted now let's trip it well I didn't adjust anything I marked the wire where it needed to be I bent the loop um, here I put the wire in the 
um, high note lip lever and I put the bellow on. It's not perfect, but it'll work for me. Now it's time to put the uh, the chain wires on for the weights and to prevent the chain from going back up inside and uh, put the hands on. And you could buy these uh, from Time Savers, but these, this is what the antique cuckoo clock uh, connectors look like. But they do have these on Time Savers, and you can make them out of a wire if that's what you want. But uh, this is what the uh, antique or most of the antique um, uh, weight connectors look like. And personally, I like them better than the modern day links because all you have to do is bend those out open, connect it to the link, and then close it a lot easier than the modern day links uh, chain weight connectors where you have to open up the uh, links themselves connect them to the wires and then connect the washer connectors whatever and then close the uh, chain links because sometimes these chain links these are big links I think these are like 46 or 47 links per foot but uh, the one day chains are small and they can be a pain to uh, to get everything connected I don't remember if this clock had a back door or not I will have to check my pictures and see. And I've been using this clock uh, to um, to work on the other clock, but it came with uh, these hands. I don't believe they're bone. I believe they are uh, like the uh, old antique plastic The reason why the door doesn't open when I have it down on the ground is because that cuckoo bird is heavy. So it has to, the door has, the clock has to be straight up and down for the bird to come out. Pictures are your friend. Not only when you're working on a clock, but also when you buy clocks 
as you can see when I buy a clock I create a folder I have an external hard drive that I put all my clocks on but I create a folder and I say what it is and how much I paid for it and uh, uh, sorry it's because I moved the external hard drive it moved on me and so let me get back to it here you can see that I bought this off a shop goodwill for 8117 with a $30 refund due to broken hands and that's to include shipping so I got it for 5117 to include shipping and I glued the hands back let me bring up the pictures that's what the hand looked like when I got it this is the topper that came with the clock but like I said it's broken let me zoom in on that so you could see it the topper is broken here's the weights that came with it and the pendulum um, because I was using parts off this clock I had to get my pictures to find out the right stuff there's the pendulum again and it didn't come with a back door pictures are your friend and getting back to the other picture you can see it didn't have that high note bellow very top part so like I said I created one And here the clock is back up on the wall it's taken away but I'm stopping it because I'm fixing to have to leave again um, to take care of a, a issue with my daughter's car so I'll be gone for a little bit anyway I hope y'all like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button and may God bless.